Well, today we're doing something I haven't in a while. We're doing a viewer requested video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Purism's own operating system. This is Pure OS, and we're going to be taking a look at it right now on the Linux Lounge. Indeed, this is Purism's own operating system, Pure OS. Now, it's based on Debian, and it sort of has a very hardline stance on free and open source software. There is no proprietary software in this distribution, and that's its primary function. But it's also designed to be fairly easy to get to grips with, which you would kind of hope because it's pre-installed on the Purism laptops and desktops and that sort of thing. Now, with that said, our review begins here on the installation screen. And the first thing that you get when you boot up the live CD is this little welcome screen. And it will let you go ahead and select your language, but as you can see, it's fairly limited. So let's just set it to English US and continue on. You can connect your online accounts, although only ones that are freedom respecting, which, handy. And then it will prompt you to start using PureOS, and it will then launch a help screen. Which, as I say, this is very easy to get to grips with, and this sort of thing is incredibly helpful. But with that said, let's go ahead and install this distribution, which most people who are going to be using this probably won't have to install it because it comes with various laptops and such. However, the installer is pretty simple. It's uh, Calamares, I believe, which is kind of the standard installer for a lot of distributions now. So we just run through the installer real quick. You can see it's fairly simple. It'll prompt you to erase your disk or manually partition lets you have swap or not, I'll have swap, why not? And then it will ask you for your information. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through the installer and I will be back in a minute with a completely installed system. Actually, real quick before we boot into the installed OS, I always like to show these, like the little uh, kind of screen that it shows you when you're installing. As you can see, we've got Welcome to Pure OS and they kind of sell themselves as being fast and responsive, privacy and security oriented which Purism is generally privacy and security oriented. Based on solid technological foundation, which, yeah, it's based on Debian, that's very solid. Fully auditable operating system, yeah, it is. It only runs free and open source software by default. And yeah, it is indeed modern, full-featured, and user-friendly. So, yeah, they kind of sell themselves quite well. So I will be back once we've installed the full system. And here we are, post-install on Pure OS. Now the first thing that you'll see after you install and boot up the installed system is this handy little welcome screen. Now I set the region to United Kingdom during installation and it's automatically picked that out, fantastic, but of course you can just go ahead and pick whatever you want. If we continue along you can select your keyboard layout, uh, some privacy settings which is something that's going to be appealing to people who use this kind of operating system and you can connect your online accounts. Now GNOME by default, I believe, will let you connect you know, your Google account and stuff like this. Pure OS out of the box does not seem to. Instead, it gives you an option to connect to Nextcloud, which I think is the sort of thing that people who use this operating system are gonna have. I also believe that Purism might have their own Nextcloud instance as well, but I'm not sure about that. And I can just go ahead and skip that, and we're ready to start using Pure OS. And once again, we get the help screen. Very handy. Now, the first thing that I want to say about this distribution is there's not really much to say about it, and I mean that in the best possible way. It's a solid foundation that you can use to build up on and install whatever you want. It's all entirely free software out of the box, so if that's a concern to you, well, this distribution caters towards that, and it has pretty much completely vanilla GNOME with a few basic programs and such installed. Like, it even has the default theme and stuff. There really isn't that much purism branding, and there's not really much of a brand identity going on in the operating system. But I suppose that also means everything's going to be quite consistent. It's going to work fairly well, because this is sort of how GNOME is supposed to be used. Now, if we just go ahead and quickly look at the application selection first. And what you'll notice is, this distribution is not bloated at all. The application selection is very bare bones. It's pretty much just the GNOME suite of apps, LibreOffice, and their own web browser, which is called the Pure Browser. And without a doubt, this is enough to get you started. This is enough to get most people started, probably. But if you want more software, they have the GNOME Software Center, so you can easily update and install new software. 
I have not updated so we won't see the stuff that you can install but oh no we can and as you can see there's a lot of stuff here and I believe that it is all free software and if we go up you know you can see you've got stuff like uh, gpodder, hexchat, chromium even which I'm sure is something that people who use this aren't going to want to use but this is technically free software and you can see the source is directly from PureOS apparently now as I say, if you use proprietary software, you're going to struggle a bit, but if you're someone who just wants free software but wants an easy way to install it, that's going to be your way to do it. And the next thing that I think is really worth talking about is the Pure Browser. Now this is pretty neat. It's essentially Firefox extended support release, but designed around respecting your privacy and freedoms. It comes with an ad blocker and HTTPS everywhere by default which I'm sure not everyone's going to like the fact that it comes with an ad blocker by default but certainly that's going to do something to protect your privacy and freedoms and I think that this is probably enough to get you started in privacy in your web browser but it's not going to break a lot of websites like other privacy focused web browsers like IceCat and such will and I do believe that this is a very good choice for a default browser in PureOS because you know it's easy to use it's not going to break stuff but it's also privacy respecting some other cool stuff that they do is they've got the default search engine to DuckDuckGo which fantastic choice maybe I would have rather like a Cirx instance or Quant even but you know it's there it's privacy respecting and as well as that they've gone ahead and disabled analytics and also you can still sync with your Firefox account though which is quite cool so all in all I really like the Pure Browser, and I think the same goes for PureOS generally. It's not bloated, it's incredibly easy to use, and will enable the average user to do everything they need while also respecting their freedoms and being entirely free software. I think if you're not someone who's super tech savvy, you'd probably be able to install this and use it with ease if your hardware supports it, and I have to say, without a doubt, this is a good entry point to using free and open source software, like entirely free and open source software. However, with that said, the whole philosophy of using free and open source software might pose a problem to some new users. For instance, like a lot of Wi-Fi cards just aren't going to work on this operating system, as well as that, like a lot of proprietary programs that some people need are just not going to be available. But of course this isn't for people who want to run proprietary software, like any proprietary software. And honestly I have to say, regardless of how you feel about Purism as a company, if you unboxed your new laptop which was fully designed to run this operating system, and it booted up, and this is what you see, I think you'd have a pretty good experience. And you know, this is going to be something that's easy to get to grips with, and if you want completely free and open source software, and you don't care about, you know, or you don't mind what Purism is doing, well, this is a fantastic choice for you, and I would highly recommend that you give it a look. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I don't have a huge amount to say about this distribution, which, as I said earlier, is probably a good thing. But with that said, I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.